to see Abby Horn in action, of course, right before this game. Wancho hung out, the, hung out in the lounge for a little bit, caught up with Abby, heard about her tournament run and her Golden Ghost story up to this point. And she's going to be facing off against Christian Chase and his Giratina V-Star deck with a couple of interesting cards in here as well. Indeed, a couple TM Devos along with Iron Leaf. So if you really want to take down those Charizard he DXs. plenty of options to deal with yep. Charizard. <laughs> Either energy in play or the TM Devo. Just make sure there's no Charizard going up against you. But yeah, other than that, I would say pretty standardized list yeah. overall. Uh, in general, and then over on Abby's side, I would say it's also a pretty standard Goldengo EX deck. So we didn't really get to see Goldengo at EUIC. It was represented a little bit, but this is a deck that actually got a decent amount of help from the Temporal Forces expansion. Of course, Prime Catcher fits in really nicely when you're playing Irida as a supporter pretty often. You have that as an option to get Gust off of an item card, but also the Cypher Maniacs Code Breaking a little less talked about supporter from this new set. Tell us how that works well in this Golden Go deck. I mean, it goes perfectly with the bonus coin ability from Golden Go EX, right? You choose your two cards and then you get to draw the two cards, which is really, really fantastic. And uh, it combos really nicely with uh, Pokestop as well, where you get to place two item cards and then immediately draw them. So a lot of help from that Cypher Maniac, as you mentioned. And then, of course, the Body Body Puffins replacing the Battle VIP passes. Here we go. The game is underway. Abby Horn on the left with Golden Go EX. Starts that gimmick ghoul, that beautiful full art, in the active spot. And it will be Christian Chase kicking off turn number one. Radiant Greninja in the active and immediately playing that powerful Buddy Buddy Poffin. Taking a moment, flipping through the deck, going to check those prize cards. A pretty common practice nowadays amongst the top level players moving those Pokemon up to the front of their deck to make sure they know exactly what they have access to through the course of a game. Yeah, very common and very important for sure. You always want to make sure that, especially in Mirage Gate based decks, you know what energies you have access to, what attackers you have access to. You never want to go into your deck after playing a Mirage Gate and realizing that you just don't have the energies to do the play that you wanted to. So very, very important to keep that in mind as we see the Mana Fee as the first choice from the Body Body Puffin. Why do you think that is chips? Yeah, it's got to be Christian recognizing the matchup, knowing that while Abby has a gimme ghoul in the active, there is a pretty solid chance that that will be accompanied by a origin form Palkia V-Star and a Radiant Greninja. And the last thing you want as Lost Box, one of your strengths is the fact that you are a one prize attacking deck as long as you want it to be until it's time to attack with your Giratina V-Star. So letting your opponent take multiple prizes with Radiant Greninja on a few come phase is a, a good way to fall behind. So Christian making sure that's not going to happen, gets that Manaphy down and utilizes concealed cards, drawing a couple more and is able to find now a Nest Ball. We can see another come phase potentially come into play. Also could work on getting a Giratina V established. Now, another great way to prevent your opponent from knocking out multiple come phase is just having one come phase available, that's right? And that's something that Giratina Vista decks used to easily prepare for. Yeah, but now that they don't have Battle VIP Pass Axis, now that it's all about the Body Body Puffin, you can't just search for Comfey Tina and then have Double Tina early on, or not as easily at least. Right away, Christian with a tough choice finds a pair of energy cards from the flower selecting one Grass, one Psychic will opt to hang on to the Psychic for now. Only one card in the Lost Zone here on turn one, meaning that seven cards next turn is not something that Christian's going to be able to pull off. But choosing to play it a little more slowly, he's going first. I think he knows there's a pretty good chance he'll be able to attack with Cramorant next turn for a prize. Yep, as long as there's a Colrith found, Cramorant is a very good attacker. And one other thing to note here is this water energy in the discard pile. That gives Abby the information that there is the potential for a Greninja attacking and going after her own Gimme Gold, which might prompt her to really go after that mana feat just like Christian did. That there is a threat of the Greninja. We'll start with the Nest Ball to grab that origin form Palkia V, the nice full art version from the premium collection box able to get that into play. And she definitely wants to try to find a little bit more. And I'm not going to lie, Pablo, I think this hand is a little lacking. She might be relying on the Pokestop for some help here. I think you're right, Chip. And we need to find Buddy Buddy Puffin, but that's not the card. Oh, no. 
defensive switch. Yeah, just switching into this Palkia, trying to protect this one Gimigul as much as possible. Now, in the previous format, this would not have been a super safe position for a player that has a low HP Pokemon on the bench because many Giratinas or Lost Zone decks would simply play Escape Rope and yep. force this Gimigul active. Of course, with the rotation, though, a card we haven't talked about quite as much as some of the other cards that rotated, but definitely an impactful one that has left the standard format. Oh, certainly Escape Rope was so, so crucial. It wasn't very popular in Giratina decks, but every Lost Box deck tended to play at least a few. Uh, and as you mentioned, sometimes a, an Escape Rope can be just as good as a boss's orders, and this would exactly be one of those situations. Christian is able to find the ever-important Colrus's experiment, finding five cards from the top, adding three to the hand, sending two the, to the Lost Zone, now three total in that lost zone. We'll see if Cramorant may be found from the nest ball that is currently being played. He is just one flower selecting away from activating that lost provisions ability, allowing Cramorant to use that spit innocently attack for free. Indeed, 110 damage onto Palkia. V's most likely what's going to happen this turn. However, I will say that's not as impactful as you would like it to be because Palkia, of course, I mean, if Abby doesn't evolve and you get those two prizes off of another uh, Spit Innocently attack, that's fantastic. But because Giratina V-Star already does 280 damage, that prior damage might not matter too, too much. One thing that could be interesting to see is when or if Christian chooses to use his opponent's Pokestop. That is one thing about stadiums in the Pokemon TCG. They do affect both players is that something you think Christian should consider somewhere in his sequence of this turn, as he is pretty deep already? He is pretty deep, and I think at this point, with his hand size, with his current plan of just attacking with Cramorant, probably not. And I do believe we see the Prime Catcher, so that Kimigold might be gone here. Yeah, so. is that the move? Prime yeah. Catcher is an extremely powerful card. Is it worth expending that one of A-Spec right here at the beginning of the game? I would say so. You know, you're up against that Gold Dango deck and you're feeling pretty safe if there's just yeah. no Gold Dango. And Abby, recognizing the moment, not super pumped about it, nodding her head, says goodbye to that gimmick ghoul. And it is Palkia against the world right now. Christian jumping pretty far ahead, but that is an interesting top deck. It is a supporter card, that Crypto Mani uh, sorry, Cypher, Cypher Maniac's Maniac. code breaking. Does combo decently with the Pokestop, Ooh. but choosing to go with that Pokestop first. Yeah, finds Poffins, which is a great card to find. But yeah, the Cypher Mania could have possibly put Poffin and something else, right, up there. Now the Cypher Mania can be utilized to set up yourself for next turn, right? But that was definitely a big, uh, a big gamble from, Ga from Abby here. And that Buddy Poffin will be played. Buddy Buddy Poffin searching the deck for two Pokemon with 70 HP or less. Have to imagine a pair of Gimigul will be hitting the board shortly. Trying to establish, get things set up. And hopefully as well for Abby, she would be able to find a Manaphy. That's a big piece as well here. Uh, because just a couple Gimigul are not necessarily safe, right? Yeah, they definitely are not safe. However, I feel like it's a gamble you can take based on the current cards in the Lost Zone. There's one Mirage Kate Gun and one Water Gun, which doesn't mean it's impossible to pull it off. You don't know whether your opponent plays three water, two water. Two water used to be more common, it seems, last format, but mm -hmm. it's a potentially calculated risk as well to where you can maybe assume that pulling off the Call Risk plus Switching Card plus Mirage Kate plus the water is a little unlikely, or is it unlikely enough to where you can take this risk to have double gold dango in play next turn? We do see that Cypher Maniac's code breaking being played now. Didn't quite get a look at what two cards Abby chose to place on top, but what would you expect in this position, Pablo, to see be good cards to draw potentially on the next turn? I don't think she has access to them right now. Yeah, it doesn't have access, as you mentioned. I think one would be a Goldengo EX possibly, although maybe she already has one in hand. I did get to see it was Greninja and Earthen Vessel. So okay. a lot of access to energy, a lot of access to extra draw. So we see the energy attachment and that's it for Abby. Now it is over to Christian's side. Does have yet another Colrus and his hand size is just starting to get larger and larger and larger, which with a Lost Zone engine is a very strong prospect. 
finds a few interesting cards here, namely a few energy cards, is going to get rid of the Temple of Sinnoh, which isn't super useful in this matchup, does have an Artisan as well, but could have been nice to bump the Pokestop on Abby's end. Yeah, Pokestop, a very important resource for these Cold Dango decks. So as you mentioned, now that Pokestop is going to remain in play for longer. And I think that's another interesting shift we've had from post-rotation format. It's the fact that the stadium uh, diversity is much lower and the stadium counts in decks are much lower. Switch cart will move Cramorant to the bench, sends Comfey to the active position. Now Flower Selecting, allowing Christian to see these top two cards does choose to lost zone a switch. We'll add one card now to the hand and has another Giratina V to put into play. It's definitely a safe place to be as a Giratina player to have a pair of Giratina V on your board. Certainly, and with Mirage Kate now activated, you could easily just take down the Palkia V Star with your Giratina V Star. Don't recall if there was one in the hand already. I think so. Does Christian have a basic water energy? Because there's a water energy and a psychic being found right now. He, I don't think he does. Okay. There's one in the discard, one in the lost zone, and there's a third one. So no double Kimi goal. This is probably a big sigh of relief for Abby. But it also means she's probably going down three prizes to zero. So not a great spot to be in as a gold angle player. Yeah, we'll see if... Abby can find a way to fight back in this one. She does play a Roxanne, but I believe it was milled on the Pokestop last turn, so not super ideal. And that stadium will be bumped. Artisan Oof. coming into play now for Christian. Even though his bench is full, he recognizes that taking away Pokestop can be pretty strong. Lost Impact deals 280 damage. Perfect math to KO that Origin Form Palkia V. Abby promoting this Gimmigul. Draw for turn is that Greninja she placed on top of her deck previously. And with that Golden Go EX coin bonus active, she can draw the top two cards of her deck. And it looks like the second card she placed on the top there was an Earthen Vessel. Yep, Earthen Vessel also drew the Cancel Cologne, which is now pretty useless since there's no Palkia V-Star in play. Uh, and there won't be any time soon, right? There's a lot of pressure coming from Christian's side. And Abby needs to find, at the very least, this KO and then hope that Christian will not be able to get a follow-up Kiratina V-Star into play. Finding this KO would mean Abby needs to see six basic energy this turn, which could be difficult to pull off, though it is possible. I think with a few superior in hand, she's definitely going to need to find more card draw off of this rating. Greninja, either another Golden Go EX or potentially even an Earthen Vessel. Let's see if she can do it. And another Golden Go. Hasn't used Artisan, which he could have used as well to thin an extra card at this point to fight, to increase the chances of finding those energies. So a small missed opportunity there for Abby. Yeah, I don't know what basic Pokemon are left in the deck. Probably one more Gimmigul, I guess. Manaphy. And then Man we know Manaphy. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw it go by. Didn't remember what exactly is prized. I think there is a Gimmigul prized, so it would just have been the Manaphy. But yeah, yeah. one card thinned out is yeah. one card thinned out. Yeah, championships are won by one card sometimes, so definitely worth it to go that extra mile. Use it after you use your coin bonus because you did want that Earth and Vessel, but definitely important to do those. And yeah, Abby, I think at this stage is where I would like to consider if you don't have the knockout, you might as well yep. go into the next game as we see that very smartly done by Abby, just making sure if she's going to have time to win this, then she wants as much time as possible. Yeah, really smart decision there from Abby. Cut your losses, understand the situation. You have a very low chance of winning that game number one based on how the early game went. So move on to game number two and hope for better fortune. Christian Chase comes away the victor in game one. And I really think that's an underexploited thing that not a lot of players do. Players, even some of the best do. players, yes, do not exactly. concede when they should concede. Yep. I, uh, yeah. I mean, it's not something uh, anyone will ever do perfectly, and you can't know the future, right? And there's definitely many situations where you make unexpected comebacks because of a major whiff from your opponent. But I do believe in a situation like that, your opponent has so many cards in your hand, you can reasonably, reasonably predict that they're not gonna miss. Well, it was all aggression for Christian Chase in the early game. He played things very well, let's point out, in Absolutely. addition. Getting down that man. If he only won Kumpe being played as well and was able to pull off a turn three lost impact 280 to this origin form Palkia V-Star. 
jumping ahead three prizes to six, and Abby saw the writing on the wall, said, let's move on to game two and hope that my opening is a little bit better. Definitely going to be crossing her fingers for a buddy-buddy pop-in. And I think something very important to note is how Christian went for the mana fee when there was only a gimmick goal in play, right? So he was making sure that he was 100% safe against a potential Palkia, but he didn't know exactly that the Palkia was part of Abby's yeah. deck. That shows the preparation, the studying aspect of not just playing the game and practicing your deck, but also knowing what the metagame is shifting towards, what the standardized decks include or don't include, so you can better prepare as you are playing. As these players are preparing for this next game, is there any other adjustment you'd like to see from Abby going into game number two? She obviously didn't draw amazing in game number one. Any missteps or anything that she should try to correct and give herself a better chance to move into this next game of the victory? I mean, like we talked about, I think that Cypher Maniac being or not being comboed with the Pokestop was a small missed opportunity for her. Um, also not taking advantage of the Artisan either. So those are little things that can definitely make or break a situation, especially when you're one card off from getting a knockout or one card off from setting up the Greninja play or whatnot. So I would love to see that along with a better start so she can actually do more things on the board. Yeah, I think Christian set up pretty nicely and had a pretty clear game plan. I think that's an important aspect of the game that, you know, sometimes players will just play their cards as they come to them and worry about thinking about future turns when that in comes future, up, right? Yeah. yeah, in the future. <laughs> worry about the future in the future. But it's important to have a game plan early on, and that's it was pretty obvious that Christian did from the beginning, right? Yeah, new to protect from the potential Greninja play, new to have double Giratina in case one went down. He always had a response to a potential gold dingo, apply early pressure with Cramorant, and then luckily not found the one of Prime Catcher to target down his opponent's one of a gimme goal at that point. Yeah, that's another good point. You know, maybe if Christian doesn't find that one of a spec that the game looks a little different. Abby did yeah. have a golden go in hand, right? Yeah. He drew the Cypher Maniac yeah, for exactly. turn, so th things could have looked pretty differently from there. I think Abby is having a hard time finding a basic here. <laughs> you draw an opening hand of seven in the Pokemon TCG, and you must have a basic Pokemon to start the game. So with two mulligans thus far, we'll see if she can find a basic here. That's a pretty good looking hand. I don't think there's a basic though. <laughs> yeah, no basic for a third time, I believe now. And to be fair, Abby does only play eight, which is on the lower side of things. Uh, Christian, on the other hand, for example, plays seven. 11, I believe, so those numbers matter, right? Those numbers are something you have to factor in when you're building your deck. Yeah, there, we've seen quad builds of different things in different yep. eras where you only play four basic Pokemon, then you tend to see your opponent start with a 12-card hand on average. One of my favorite moments, I think, from last season was in Swiss Round 9. I think it was at Baltimore Regionals. There was a player who was 8-0 and with Stone Jorner VMAX, <laughs> a deck yep. that only played three or four basic Pokemon, and he had like seven or eight mulligans to start things off, and they had to utilize the rarely used judge enforced progression or a judge ball judge as the community ball, would yeah. call it often where uh the head judge has to come over and flip cards from the top of the uh, player's deck until a basic pokemon is found just to for the sake of time more than anything yeah. <laughs> something we don't see too often was maybe crossing my fingers we'd see it here but you know what it's okay <laughs> three mulligans we'll get into game number two it's definitely a very rare thing i don't think i've ever witnessed one myself but yeah that's stone journer uh vmax deck same like with the Draco Soul VMAX deck. Yep, yep, Those yep. sort of decks uh, were very slim on the basic Pokemon. Now, prize-wise, Abby did prize the Prime Catcher, which could factor in. There's not a lot of ways to cost in these days for Gold Dango. Already things are looking much better, though. Abby has opened up the Radiant Greninja, which is excellent because it doesn't get one hit KO'd by Cramorant whenever you are going first. And also at the same time, she's got a pair of Gimmigool thanks to Buddy, Buddy Poffin, and also an Ultra Ball, putting two energy cards into the discard pile to water energy at that, grabbing that Origin Form Palkia V. This is the setup you want to see as a Golden Go player. Picture perfect start for Abby. The only thing that would make this better is if she has another energy in her hand to be able to draw cards with concealed cards and a gold Dengo EX to follow this up. That would be the dream here. Now, there is maybe a world where 
concealed cards could have been used before the Ultra Ball, right? It depends on what the hand is, though, how many Pokemon you're still hoping to find to get your setup going. What do you think of that in this position? Yeah, even, yeah, as you mentioned, before the Buddy Buddy Puffin, before the Ultra Ball, just to get extra cards, that diversifies your discards for the Ultra Ball, but also if you draw some basic Pokemon there, you're going to have even more basic Pokemon as the Buddy Buddy Puffin searches for the two extra. Still an excellent start regardless. A few energy in the discard pile interacts with all of those powerful superior energy retrievals. And Abby is content to pass to Christian, who has started the Giratina V. Could be a, a beseeking angle always. That's one of Giratina's favorite attacks to go for. And the Buddy Buddy Poffin will start things off, however. Christian going to check those prize cards. And do you expect we'll see a similar setup to game number one, Manaphy plus one Comfe? I would imagine so, because now the threat of Greninja is even more present, right? There's the possibility to use, for Abby to use Greninja. She's only a few cards away immediately next turn, so I would say it's definitely a priority for Christian. He did see that Abby plays the Canceling Cologne, but it's an extra card Abby needs to find in order to do it. Unfortunately for Abby, though, with the Prime Catcher being prized, it's going to take her a boss's orders and that canceling cologne to even attempt that play. Yeah, really, it's two extra cards, right? Because if there's no Manaphy in play and just a pair of Comfey, all you need to do is have one more Water Energy and a Palkia V-Star, yeah. right? But with Manaphy being down, Christian is now forcing Abby to have both canceling cologne and the Prime Catcher. Adding two more cards into the mix makes him much more likely he'll have a solid setup. He is able to utilize his Artisan Stadium now. The Stadium War isn't something that has been a super important part of many decks in the Pokemon TCG in the last couple of years. It was pretty prevalent in Giratina last year with Path to the Peak. You wanted to make sure you had plenty of those available in the end game against Gardevoir. How do you think that plays into the mix here whenever Pokestop is such a big part of Abby's strategy, utilizing this Artisan early? I mean, I think uh, it definitely has to weigh in your mind, but is always, I always advise players, like, you can't give up on advancing your setup and your ideal situation on the board to not help your opponent, right? So if they have Pokestop, they have Pokestop, and if they have a lot of access to it, that's up, like that's out of your control. But you can't not set up that second convey, not get those cards into a loss zone and sacrifice your setup in the beginning just to try and counter something that isn't even happening just yet. Nest ball played for Christian, finds that Cramorant three cards in the Lost Zone away from activating that Lost Provisions ability. Now, I'm not sure if there was a Chorus in this hand just yet or not, and there isn't, but I do believe there is a Pokegear 3.0. Christian will first go with this Flower Selecting. Look at these top two cards, add one to the hand, sending Ooh. a Mirage Gate to the Lost Zone. It looks like a Switch was the card that was kept. And now seven cards from the top with Pokegear 3.0. Is Christian able to find a Colrus? One more card, and no! Ooh. Boss's Orders, the only supporter card found from this Pokegear. Not what you want to find this early, and with only two cards in Lost Zone, Christian's deck might not be able to do much. Has already attached energy, right? That Jet Energy, therefore, there's no possibility to use that Bee Seeking either. So Christian not off to the ideal start compared to Abby. It will be a second Giratina placed onto the bench and a pass. Abby Horn with a pretty decent opening here. We'll see if she is able to capitalize. We'll utilize that Artisan now, perhaps that adjustment from game number one, finding an opportunity to get another Gimmigool in play. And that is an important part for this Golden Go deck. A swarm of Gimmigool becomes a swarm of Golden Go later on. Yeah, and with that coin bonus ability, every Golden Go just helps you find what you need when you need it. It's not quick search, right? But sometimes you get to a point where you're drawing so many cards that it actually doesn't matter that you can't directly search for what you need. Gimmigool is being eyed up as the first choice. Manaphy definitely loses a lot of value as you start to yep. evolve your Pokemon now. Something to note, Abby probably is not expecting TM Devolution. She did not see it in game one. I don't think any got sent to the Lost Zone. So there is always a world where if there's no Manaphy put into play, Christian could go for some board wipe strategies, right? 90-90 onto two Golden Goes. Sableye spread some damage. Maybe yeah. even a Cramorant hit into a Golden Go could lead to a turn of TM Devolution clearing the board on Abby's side. 
Yeah, that is definitely an alternate win condition that Christian has in this case, as he has based so much of his deck around that technical machine evolution now. Abby does run into a little bit of a problem here. If she wants to start attacking this turn, she needs to dedicate that energy attachment to Goldengo and needs to use the star portal from Palkia V-Star just to be able to retreat that Greninja. So not the best situation. Yeah, definitely a little awkward. She could go in with the origin form Palkia V-Star which I don't hate that as an option necessarily. Christian with just two cards in the Lost Zone would have a pretty tough time getting to even seven to, to utilize Mirage Gate, right? Yeah, especially with our Comfey down as well in that point. Now, that would eliminate the possibility to attack with Greninja. I At think some that's point, the, sure. the biggest thing. But I feel like if Abby wants to uh, think about winning two games as well, she needs to start making something happen. Got to put on some pressure at some point here. Heavy ball played, no Pokemon available there. Abby taking note of exactly which cards were in the prizes. Probably a little bummed to see that Prime Catcher hiding away. Also, Earthen Vessel being in the prizes, a little awkward. That is something Golden Gold can struggle with, is finding energy out of the deck in the early game. Yep, that's where Earthen Vessel is very, very important, but you can't always immediately or easily find it. However, this Irida will provide Abby with that possibility. She also has a switch which could allow Goldengo to start attacking and conserve that very crucial star portal, the star ability to make sure that the Greninja play is possible at some point. It will be switch most likely grabbed from the Irida. Also that origin form Palkia V-Star being thinned from the deck, still having a think about which item card to grab here. Not quite sure which route she wants to go down but it looks like Switch is what she will settle on, ultimately. Now, Comfey is weak to metal, so um, Goldengo can easily take this knockout by just discarding one energy. However, Abby only has one metal energy in her hand, so she's really going to have to hope she finds an energy off of this coin bonus ability once she switches into active. Otherwise, that Comfey will actually dodge the knockout here. Yeah, Comfey is weak to metal, but actually uses the coin bonus now. I mean, maybe recognizing that if she didn't draw the energy, she doesn't want, want the golden go in the active, right? Yeah, potentially. So does end up working out decently here, but actually will attach to the Greninja. Are we going to see that Palkia go in here? Okay, so it's going to be the star portal. That water energy allowing her to utilize uh, the maximum value for this star portal. This extra water energy might not be as impactful as you would like it to be, but yeah, this works. Yeah, this, this will work. It'll allow Abby to put on the aggression. Now, you can attach up to three water yep. energy to your water Pokemon, and she actually, I think, wisely here is choosing to leave the basic water energy in the discard pile. Why is that a smart decision here from Abby? You need to access those energies to maximize your damage output through superior energy retrieval for Gold Dango EX, right? So if the Greninja play is already out of commission, you might as well just leave all the resources there so that Gold Dango can take advantage of those energies later on. Now, there is perhaps a world where you could attach to Greninja over the course of a few turns, but yeah. with this deck, you're probably going to have to attach your energy for turn every turn to the Golden Go EX. So I think that's a smart play overall from Abby, and now it is on Christian here, finding himself at a deficit for the first time in this Swiss Round 7 match. This is a win and in match. Both of these players at a 5-0-1 record. If they get a win in this round, that means they lock up a spot in day two. They've got at least six more rounds of Pokemon to play tomorrow. If they lose, they're going to have a lot of pressure riding on their final two games. Christian uses Flower Selecting, finds one Comfey. At this point in the game, usually a pretty safe thing to send to the Lost Zone, choosing to keep Mirage Gate as the other option. It will be a switch into yet another Comfey. One more Flower Selecting to come. This does put four cards now in the Lost Zone, I believe. Yep. Roxanne was found there. That's something that could be pretty huge for later on in this game. Now, maybe I missed something. There is a Colrez in Christian's hand. Okay, choosing to go for the boss against a gimmickle rather than doing a potentially useless 110 damage onto the Palkia. Now, Christian will also bump the Stadium Artisan. Not useful to him anymore, so he wants to ensure Abby has limited access to it. This does mean Abby 
if she's able to find a Pokestop, that will be a stadium that she's able to keep in play for the rest of the game. And the draw for turn for Abby is a solid one. Golden Go EX. And that origin form Palkia V-Star sent right to the active. Now, just because this Palkia is active does not mean this is what Abby wants to attack with this turn. We talked about those energies potentially being locked up in play. She can always retreat the Palkia, right? It does have two retreats. Send those two energies to the loss, uh, to the discard pile, excuse me. And now superior energy retrieval is activated and able to grab even more cards. Yeah, I think if you had a way to knock out a Giratina V, then that would be a very wise decision. Mm. However, I'm not sure if Abby has the cards to potentially pull that off yet. There are two copies of Boss's Hoarders in the list. Maybe the Artisan limits uh, the possibility for Palkia to get to the number. However, I do feel there is enough. So one Boss's Hoarders would really allow Abby to take a commanding lead here. It is possible. Boss's Order is the only missing piece at this point. Origin form Palkia V-Star, kind of wild that we've seen this fall out of the meta as an attacker because this card is just so inherently strong. I mean, think back to that NAIC in the 2022 season. This card just absolutely dominated. It was everywhere. It's so energy efficient. It has a high amount of HP. It does so much for just two energy. But just with where we are in the format, it's really fallen out of favor for most players. It really has. Uh, it feels like it's been power gripped. And there's the boss's orders chip. What a huge draw there from the concealed cards. And she still has a pair of coin bonus to go with, drawing an additional two cards. And this will open up a two prize swing. Getting three prizes from your origin form Palkia V-Star is really strong. It's the same thing we encountered in our Swiss round four earlier today, where um, Joseph was able to utilize, or sorry, excuse me, it was Jeffrey was able to utilize his origin form Dialga to get three prize cards. Anytime you're using that two prize Pokemon to gain more prizes than that attacker is worth, you're in a solid position. Yeah, it, it's definitely made itself worth. Uh, the, the resources you invested is worth it. And as we see that Giratina V is going down and it's definitely best to do it this way because Goldengo can't take down a Giratina V-Star. Palkia yes. can't. So yes. having the double Goldengo is exactly the perfect counter that Abby needs to the double Giratina from Christian. Now Abby is at three prize cards remaining, which does open up the possibility of Roxanne. Now Christian is actually playing a split here, has one Roxanne and one Iono. Oftentimes in Giratina lists before the rotation, most players had landed on the decision to just play two copies of Roxanne. What do you think about that supporter split here in this new format? I mean, I like it because Iono is an extra uh, consistency card, right? Early on, if you don't have Colrus, but you need a fresh hand, that Iono will get you closer. However, I'm not sure if Christian can afford to play the Roxanne here. Only has four cards in the Lost Zone, so it's true. if he played Roxanne, he'd be able to attack Abby's hand, but he wouldn't be able to do anything offensively wise. Not able to take down this Falcon V-Star. Also sends a Giratina V to the Lost Zone, so now this is the only copy that remains of Giratina V, and it needs to go up against a double Gold Dango on Abby's bench. It could be difficult. We could also see Super Odd come into play at some point, a, a way to reuse the Giratina that has hit the discard pile. But for now, Colrus will be the play. A few Gust options found here and a couple Energy. A little bit awkward to choose from here. Countercatcher is pretty strong in this deck. Christian could utilize it right now if he wanted to, maybe using Cramorant to take out the Manaphy, even up the prize race a little bit. But is having a debate about it. Would have to potentially send two energy cards to the Lost Zone, and that is ultimately what he ends up on. I really can't imagine a situation where the ideal scenario for Christian would have been to get a Giratina V-Star out and respond to this Palkia V with another Giratina V as backup, but because Christian chose to use Flower Select first before that Colrus, then he had that tough choice. I don't know what he kept over the Giratina V, but it's going to be really difficult to piece back-to-back -back attackers. And this is a situation where, with the resources that you have, with what's in play for yourself and your opponent, this is where I would love to see Christian be like, you know what, this is probably a favorable matchup for me. Let's go to game three. He, he does have Super Odd in his hand, I believe. I think, oh, is that the counter catcher all the way at the back? I did just find the Nest Ball off the Comfey and he is playing it first. So there's no Super Odd available. If he could have gotten down the Giratina V from the discard pile, maybe there is still a chance here. Let's also, I don't, I actually don't think the Team Devo can really do too much. I guess yeah. it depends on which Gimmigool are under these Golden Go because Abby is playing a split. 
There's a 70 HP gimmick goal in the format, and there's a 50 HP gimmick goal in the format. So there is possibly a world where we could see Lost Mine set up these two Golden Go, and then Team Devolution could take two prizes and also take the draw power out of play for Abby. Yeah, there is that possibility for sure. But can you pull it off in time? That in is time. the big, big question here. If you can pull that off with Roxanne, then sure, you're in for a treat, right? But Christian can't even get to 10 cards in the Lost Zone this turn because chose to play the boss's orders yeah. last turn, so that gonna is be a, a problem. A future turn game plan for sure. Christian here will use the counter catcher to bring up the Manaphy. Cramorant can easily take that out. One thing I do kind of like about this, you know, maybe not everything is perfect here for Christian in this spot, but taking this knockout as opposed to knocking out the Golden Go does mean your opponent is not able to Roxanne you, right? Yep. So you're guaranteed with four prizes remaining. Roxanne, not a live card for your opponent. So if you can go two prizes and then 1-1 one, one with the board set up, it's definitely possible uh, to piece things together here for Christian. If he can do that, Sableye play. It does, of course, I think, depend on which gimmick goal are under these Golden Go. That, that's a big part here. That is a big part, and I do believe it's one of each. So 12 damage counters would be perfect to put five and seven. We don't actually see Christian, like, ask Abby to check which gimmick goal <laughs> is under each Gold Tango to make sure that you're uh, placing the damage correctly. Now, one big card missing here for Abby is that Prime Catcher that is still prized. If that Prime Catcher was available and you could Cypher Maniac for it, then you could easily take down the Giratina V that is in play. And even if Sableye pulls that off, that Palkia could easily close out the game. Yeah, if she could find her other boss, KOing this Giratina would be incredible. Uh, this Palkia has just put in a ton of work. I mean, this is a Golden Go deck. Palkia is yep. kind of the backup <laughs> support option here. But in certain situations, it just comes up as a strong attacking option. And Christian has chosen not to deal with it. So Abby's just been content swinging with this attacking Pokemon. Palkia really proving its worth in this deck, and I'm sure has been crucial to get Abby to this 501 record. That subspace well, subspace well, just does so much damage. It's a great card to lead with early on. Here is the Pokestop. stop. We're spinning that stop. Let's see what we catch. It looks like Boss's order is sent to the discard pile. The card Abby would have loved to have found, yep. and again, a situation where things are just a little unfortunate for her with that Prime Catcher still remaining in the prize cards. I, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that use of Spoke stuff right there, especially with a Safer Maniac. You could have just put the focus, the boss's orders at the top, but no supporter played this turn, I believe. Yeah, I don't think so. Could have maybe set up the Cypher Maniac to draw something good on the next turn and work from there. As it stands, Abby is still in the lead on the prize trade, two to four at this point. We'll see if Christian can find a way to fight back in this one. I believe he does already have the Roxanne in his hand. This gets him to 10 cards now in the lost zone. What option, like Christian has just about every option in his deck available to him right now. What would you like to see him go for? Definitely disruption, even trying to bring up the Greninja because he really needs to stop Abby from attacking this turn as we see the Prime Catcher do exactly that. That way, it might be difficult for Abby to even retreat. It might be difficult for Abby to do anything else after. And Abby might be a little suspicious here. I don't think she has any indication about the TM Devo, but you have to be suspicious as to why your opponent is still playing this game. Is it possible that Abby didn't play the Cypher Maniac last turn because she didn't need anything else? She knew there was a decent chance she was going to get Roxanne, and it's a card she would not mind drawing into off of a Roxanne. She, it's a card she wants in her deck. Is that a possibility? Yeah, definitely a possibility. I feel like the, the small mishap here is using the focus stuff when you don't really need anything, but you, there's a risk of, of getting discarding rid of that boss. this boss disorder sure. that is now in the discard pile, especially when you know your prime catcher is still in your prize cards. And there we go, asking to see which gimme goal is under which Pokemon. This 50 HP uh, gimme goal is right here, 70 HP, and therefore this sets up the TM Devo play perfectly. Yeah, and if you are Abby, this is setting off the alarm bells. You are like, my opponent plays TM Devolution in their deck almost certainly. Why else would Christian ask for that specific thing? As we see the energy to be able to retreat, keep applying pressure. I would love to see Abby finish drawing cards before. Oh, chooses to use concealed, concealed cards. 
That's a big risk. Once it is again. a little risky. Yeah, she did have a few. It's pretty low. I don't know. It, it definitely is risky, but there's so many cards she could find, right? I don't think she's played a single superior energy retrieval thus far this game. She has not. That's true. And That's there's true. Iridas that she can find as well. She still has the coin bonus available from the benched Golden Go EX. Right. Then finish using those coin bonuses before you commit the energy just in case. You know, I, I don't sure. know. I, I try to case. be a, a safe type of... Of guy. <laughs> of course. Yeah, but in this spot, you know, now Abby will be able to utilize the coin bonus for two cards, assuming that's the Pokemon she's wanting to attack with. Now, I guess the argument could be made that Origin Form Palkia V-Star would be the better attacker in this position. We've gotten so much use from it already. Why not continue to make that happen? I would really like to see Abby grab the Palpat here as her item of choice, put back those two bosses' hoarders, and therefore, even if your hand gets attacked again, all you need is this Palkia V-Star to take down any of these three Pokemon. Sure. Yep, the Palpad grabbing the boss's orders back into the deck could have been a solid option for sure. This could get a little perilous. Abby's going to go down to just one single prize card here. But Christian has an Iono in his list. I don't know if he has access to it right now, but if Christian can go Iono, and at the same time, utilize Technical Machine Devolution, leaving Abby with just one card and then leaving a high HP Pokemon like the Giratina V-Star in the active, Abby could have a hard time closing out this game. Certainly, and that's where exactly where those two bosses orders could help her close this game. But unfortunately, that ship has sailed, Chip. Now four cards being brought back to the hand, four energy cards from that superior energy retrieval. One more draw from that final coin bonus. Don't want to forget that as an option. And Subspace Swell easily taking the knockout. Abby did find the Prime Catcher off of the prize cards. That is a huge pickup now. Any Irida, any Cypher Maniac does lead to Prime Catcher, potentially allowing her to close out this game. Yeah, it does open up a few possibilities. It is only one out. However, compared to the possible three, we'll see what Christian can piece here Iono Prime Catcher onto the Greninja to stop a potential attack and use the Giratina or as you mentioned just use it directly with the Giratina here it's gonna be tough but the big card is that Iono chip is he able to find it I do see it in the deck do you yes yeah oh, it's yeah, right it's there right, right at the top yep right at the top it is in the deck technical machine devolution in the deck as well but I believe the second copy he plays is currently in the hand with Two flower selectings. Can he pull it together? He also would need a switch in this position as well, which it doesn't look like he has. Oh. He's going to use the Mirage Gate to thin a little bit. You know, if you're looking for one specific card, you usually want to try to thin out your deck as much as possible. Most certainly that takes away, like, especially when your deck is this low in, in the count, then every card you get is potentially a 5, 10% decrease in your chances of finding that specific Iono. But I still not sure if, I think the odds are not in Christian's favor to find this Iono here. Definitely not. And it also makes me wonder, do we go for the Pokestop at this point, right? <laughs> if you find a Mirage Gate, that's more cards you pull out of the deck, but you do run the risk of milling the Iono. That might be what Christian's debating here. I feel like you do take that risk, right? Because there's more cards that are not Iono in your deck than there are Iono. So, all right, that's three cards closer to the Iono here. It could have also found Switch, which is something else he wouldn't hate to see. It would allow him to utilize more flower selectings. Two cards here. There's, there's the Iono, there's a the huge Iono. find. Will be able to put Abby to just one single card and nearly completely wipe her board, taking two prize cards. And he's got the game-winning play set up with his Giratina already having three energy cards on it. And Prime Catcher isn't even a good card now for Abby because of the Greninja being in play. She would also need an energy to retreat that Greninja to actually close wow. out the game. What a position we find ourselves in. Abby actually could have even attached an energy last turn, right? She played the Superior, could have put the energy on the Radiant Greninja. That's a long way ahead to see, but you know, you gotta think about those type of situations potentially coming up. Just one card for Abby Horn. Is she going to look at it? What is it? I couldn't quite tell. Christian's got his board set up. Technical Machine Devolution pulling these two Golden Go up to Abby's hand, and those Gimmigul will be knocked out. Yeah, bye-bye Gimmigul. To the discard pile they go. 
There were five and seven damage counters, respectively. Palkia also should be going yes. to the hand as yep. well. No, Pal no, Palkia does survive. Palkia does not have any yeah. damage. There we go. All good, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit of a confusing situation. Also, not something you would expect to see from your Giratina V-Star opponent no. necessarily. And that energy does go to the discard pile as well. Now here with six minutes left, what does Abby have? It is the Irida. Irida. Can she find an energy card if she finds a superior energy retrieval or That's an energy it's... retrieval or a basic energy? She can spin the Pokestop, though. She can. If she finds a superior energy retrieval, she's got the Irida to close out the game with the Prime Catcher. I think it's going to come down to the three cards she discards here. Energy retrieval, superior energy retrieval. Either one of those pieces is allowing her to win. Let's see it. Spinning the stop. Here we go, Pablo. Here we go. One, there it two, is. right off the top. Two energy retrieval And the ball well. pad. That and should not the be there. Pad. There we go. <laughs> now let's see if, let's she, see if can, she sees it. If she right? can piece it all together, thinking through the position she finds herself in. Just one prize card remaining. She's got it. Irida in hand finds the prime catcher that she took last turn. I don't think she sees it, Chip. Energy to retreat the Greninja. She's got it all in her hand. All right. There we see the Irida. It's got to be prime catcher, right? There it is at the very, very bottom of the deck. Here we go. Deck. Yes, sure enough. The second Palkia V-Star for good measure. Christian sees the writing on the wall right now, and Abby Horn wow. sends us to a game three. <laughs> she has us in the edge of our seats, Chip. What a game. What a play from Christian there. That yeah. technical machine devolution, he did everything right, but Abby was able to find just enough pieces to pull off the improbable victory. After she was ahead for so long, Giratina showing its comeback chops, you know, what it is known for doing. Christian was almost able to pull it off, but Abby found the piece at the very end. Would have been an incredible comeback to see here on stream. And it shows how Christian, since the very beginning, he knew he was falling behind and he knew exactly what to do and how to do it in order to make sure that he had a chance at winning now. Unfortunately, with five minutes left on the clock, though, do we see a game finish here? And that is something we'll have to see how it concludes. I do think there's not a super high chance of it. Five minutes, not really enough time for either of these decks to get going, unless one player gets extremely unlucky and has a bad start. But it really was the Palkia V-Star putting in the work for Abby here. Yeah. I, I think it took all six prize cards. It did, it did. All six prize cards were taken by, Pal by Palkia. So this is more a Palkia Goldengo deck than a Goldengo <laughs> Palkia deck. As we see the Prime Catcher prize again. And three energy on Christian's side. That's not super good. The rescue board as well being in the prizes. Which uh, means you're going to have to use energy to retreat a bunch as well. Rough situation for both players. But we're off to the races. Double Kimi Gold start for Abby. And we see the Artisan immediately get played, which will allow Abby to get extra resources in, in to play. Yeah, right away she'll more than likely be grabbing out the Manaphy. Christian here is playing pretty quickly. Wants to give himself a shot to close this one out, potentially. Using that Flower Selecting, Super Rod and Mirage Gate being found. Does choose to keep the Super Rod and Concealed Cards. Discarding a Grass Energy to draw two more. It's two more <laughs> energy. Oh, no. Yeah, two energy with three the prize cards. I don't think Christian did the thorough price check this time around. He'll no. be very glad he kept that super odd based on his prizes that he doesn't know. <laughs> and hey, how about that as a card to be found? That Giratina V, pretty solid. Now Christian with just two cards in the loss zone, not super likely to be able to pull anything off next turn, but still something he wants to get down eventually. And Abby playing this Buddy Buddy Poffin makes pretty me think much. there is a pretty high chance that we're going to see one match point for each of these players when this concludes. Yeah, I would agree. Neither player being able to lock their spot in day two, but still being very much in the running and having essentially two more win and ins to make sure that they can play in what is likely to be the biggest day two ever. Will be Manaphy and that Gimmigul grabbed for Abby. Also has the Artisan to utilize if that fourth Gimmigul is in the deck. I do believe it is. Right, call for Family works as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> Go use that. I guess you actually could Artisan down the other Gimmigul and then, and then Call for Family the, for Palkia. the Palkia. Yep. Or, well, then you don't have bench space for Greninja, right? So 
actually using not using the artisan is probably correct here. Well, I mean, you have to expect Christian's going to be aggressive, right? If there's any chance at finishing this game, there's got to yeah, be a Kramer. Yeah, decent chance that your Gimmigul gets KO'd. Sure, yeah. sure. Regardless, we'll see what Christian does here. Finds the Mirage Gate on the top of the deck, immediately playing that Colrus's experiment. There's that powerful Iono. There's a Krem. Buddy Poffin is a pretty easy choice here, but the other three cards are all ones he would like to keep, and I think he will just send an energy to the Lost Zone. A little tough here whenever you've already prized quite a few. Indeed, two of them being Grass Energy. That does mean there's two more left in the deck. Another energy found Ooh. right there. So there's currently five inaccessible energy for Christian, three in the prize cards and two in the Lost Zone. Now looking at Abby's hand, she has Cypher Maniac and two Gold Tango EXs. So I really don't mind not having Greninja in that spot. Sure, that totally makes sense. Christian will utilize the Artisan to protect his board a little bit by using the Mana Fee. Off this flower selecting will pretty happily send the Nest Ball to the Lost Zone and immediately we see that Cramorant come down. Now, something that's a little risky with this board for Christian, only one Giratina V in play. Yep. Is that something Abby could potentially capitalize on? Certainly could, especially if she had access to Prime Catcher, which we know she doesn't. But in a game where we were able to see the full uh, game play out completely, there's still the possibility of the Greninja play. There's only one Giratina in play as well. so. Definitely not the ideal setup for Christian, but I think both players are aware of the time and they're probably realizing that it's going to be impossible to close this one out. Maybe that's on purpose, right? You don't bench more than two Pokemon just in case somehow your opponent gets those two extra turns and sure. is able to close out the game. Yeah, if Abby could take a two-prize knockout in the next eight seconds and then Christian draws a card to start the turn, yep. Abby could technically win with a two-prize knockout, two-prize knockout, then Christian wouldn't have to even put another two-prizer in play. And then now with time expiring, these players will be notified that Abby will be turn zero. And looking at the board state here, it's going to end in a tie. We'll see if they'll continue to play it out. I can't imagine there's any sort of gentleman's agreement or anything like that in play. Not at this point. Not yeah. at this point in the tournament. So we'll, we may see them play it out and just see what would have potentially happened. But as it stands, we're going to more than likely see a tie in this round. Now, Abby's V-Star marker is flipped, but obviously there hasn't been a V-Star used in this match yet. We see the coin bonus, a few extra cards. We're going to see the Cypher Maniac get played. What do you find here, Chip? Potentially an Earthen Vessel, so you can just get access to more of your energy cards. I do believe Abby actually has a switch in the hand, so we could see her switch into the other Golden Go EX to get the coin bonus for a both of these cards that she's putting on top of the deck, not just one. And it does look like Earthen Vessel is choice number one. Now, Palkia V-Star is not necessarily a bad option either. Maybe the Greninja could be decent. There is an energy already in her hand. Yeah, you need four total energy to get a knockout with Gold Dango this turn on this Cramorant because of that pesky 110 HP. Right? Three. Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Three plus the one to attach. And she should have access to that. Yeah, more than likely should be able to guarantee it here with this Cypher Maniac. I think our players are talking through the situation. They yep. recognize no one can win, so we'll see the handshake. And these players will both tie, moving to 5-0-2.